We got to talk about that. One man who was in the middle of all that was the Doors drummer, John Densmore. And he's written a book about his life in Zimbabwe. This is it. Riders of the Storm, John Densmore. Let's bring him out. Good to know that a, a, a whole other generation who wasn't there knows exactly what the feeling was like. Yeah. That's, uh... What was it like, John? Because you were actually in these pictures we just saw. Well, I mean, what was the feeling when you were there? Because very how did I survive people... that? I see exactly what I was going to say. Um, it looks more chaotic than it actually was. You know, uh, a few people got on stage and they didn't know what to do when they got there and. Uh, Actually, Jim said that, well, we've caused a couple riots. What does that mean? You know? <laughs> Actually, he wanted everybody to uh, go home and take that energy and change the world. On That's the road with Jim Morrison. Yeah. Because we hear so many stories and we hear so much self destruction. What did you feel when you saw what oh. happened to yourself? And Jim, because you know it just doesn't happen to Jim. It has to happen to you at the same time. Well, I wasn't the lead singer. <laughs> but you were the drummer. You were the guy. I was. You're, on you're the, the first note we hear in "Light My Fire," you know. Yeah. So, yeah, I was on the side of that bright spotlight, so I only got fr uh, singed a little. Mm -hmm. He was uh, an amazing poet. He uh, he wrote. Music just like it just came to. They go up in the Hollywood Hills, I understand, and would just write music and yeah. bring it down, almost he, like from Mount Sinai or whatever. He had all these words, but he didn't know how to write a song, and so he uh, he thought of melodies and to remember the words, and then he said, "How do we do it?" You know. Yeah. Did you ever feel jealous of Jim Morrison, John? Well, as I wrote in the book uh, on the first album cover, I I said, "Well, how come his picture's so big and mine's so small?" <laughs> you know. <laughs> but then, um, then I thought maybe his face would sell more records. <laughs> maybe my face would sell record uh, books, uh, magazines, uh, Soldier of Fortune or something. I know there's a lot, there's a lot in the book about the, the dark side of Jim Morrison. It's interestingly enough uh, done with black and gold and shadows and everything. Was there ever a lighter side to Jim Morrison that we may not know? Um, As you think back on your relationship with him. Before we made it, Jim said to me, uh, you want to bet we're going to make it? And I said, sure. And he whipped out a quarter and popped it in his mouth. <laughs> and I said, uh, I hope that makes it through your small intestines. <laughs> he swallowed it. He swallowed the quarter. Yeah. So there's the lighter side. What? You survived the 60s, though. I mean, because you got Jim Morrison. You describe him dropping tabs of acid, you know, double tabs going out on stage and all. How can a person even know what they're going to say or do when you're in that physical shape? Mm. Well, that's how come at the Hollywood Bowl, I couldn't figure out what was wrong. And I'm playing along. Mm -hmm. It's okay, but what? Wh come on, Jim. You know, and he's looking down at some moth in the on the stage, you know. But I loved him. I loved him for his words, you know. He, he he's called himself, what, a, a monster in leather or something? Or a monster dressed in, leather. in black leather. Wow. So now there's a movie coming out. Oliver Stone, one of the most gifted directors around, is going to be directing. You are the consultant on the movie. Bi is Billy Bear is the star. Yeah, that's right, Billy. You are in the movie, aren't you? Yeah, I get a chance to uh, to beat up Jim <laughs> and beat up his manager. I, I play the um, the promoter of the infamous concert yeah. where Jim allegedly exposed himself. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
How close to true life is it? Because uh, as being the consultant, that's what you were hired to do, is to make sure that it was what we're supposed to see. Well, it's, it's like the book I wrote myself. Uh, the movie is a big collaborative experiment. It's like six-year career, four people, relationships, all crammed down to two hours. Mm -hmm. So it's not the truth, but I hope it has a truth. All Oliver said he wanted to make a movie that uh, says that Jim died for his words, which I, I said, great. But after reading the script, I said, just be careful. Uh, you don't undermine what you want to say with the dark. If you could go back and change one thing about your life, now that you look back with the, the doors, with Jim Morris and everything, what, what one thing pops out of your mind, John? I hate John? that question. You do hate that? <laughs> If, would it be if, I, if I changed anything, then I wouldn't have learned anything from what I went through. Mm -hmm. And then if I didn't change anything, then I wouldn't grow. So yes and no. I, you know. Change your attitude and, and come back in just a couple of minutes, because if you don't mind, I'd love to have these yeah. people experience what we have been all afternoon. You've been rehearsing, uh, Billy and the band, everybody. Yeah. John Densmore was talking to them. Love me two times. The way the door is doing. All right? Super. Be right back with John Densmore as we take you further into the night. I present to you, for your inspection musically, John Densmore with Billy Vera and the Beatles and Love Me Two Times. Come on, let's get into it.
He can hit those stairs. Stay here. Ty and Randy be coming up next. End of the night.